Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to clean a mechanical keyboard. This is just for cleaning the board, not the switches, that's for another video. This is just general maintenance. This is what's worked very well for me so far. I've got an IBM Model FAT that needs some serious TLC right here. I know the camera doesn't truly capture it, but it is actually extremely dirty. I mean really, really bad. Look at all that crap everywhere. First, remove the keycaps. This is best done with a key puller, either a ring puller of some sort or a wire puller. You can get either for one pound shipped a piece from China and it's worth the investment, so do that first. Pulling caps without them can break off the caps if you're not careful. In most cases, including the Model F, you can simply pull straight up, but with some designs like Space Invaders and NECs, you want to wiggle them side to side and beam springs up and down. Put all the caps in something. I use plastic boxes like this. Then add just a little bit of washing up liquid, just a tiny bit to take the surface tension off. That's fine, that's more than enough. Don't add too much or you'll never get the bubbles out of all the nooks and crannies. And then add water. If your keycaps are PBT like this, you can use boiling water but if they're ABS, you'll want to use warm, but not hot water. The reason for that is that ABS tends to deform under higher temperatures. Let me show you what I mean using this sacrificial ABS space bar right here. So, boiling water. You can already see it deforming, oh dear. This is how that turned out, by the way. Don't say I didn't warn you. Then, when you're done, deep the water and rinse the keycaps thoroughly. A lot of dirt won't come off from just rinsing, so it's best to hand dry them. Take a sacrificial towel and just rub them dry on all sides. Often, water gets inside keycap stems and it takes ages to dry. You can get this out simply by flicking the keycaps like this, using centrifugal force. Works a treat. After all the caps have been cleaned, put them in a place that's either warm or well ventilated and let them sit there overnight. If you're dealing with particularly dirty keycaps, get some denture tablets to clean them with. Some people have reported really good results with that. Alternatively, if you have an ultrasonic cleaner, that works very well too. While the caps are off, you can clean the chassis and the case. Looks like a textbook example of oh dear to me. For the chassis, it's good to use a toothbrush or a longer head brush and just scrub, preferably while also hoovering it at the same time. The combination of that should be able to get the vast majority of dirt out. Don't use water or anything like that near the electronics. They don't like them even if they're not plugged in. If you find greasy or sticky stuff, use IPA. That's isopropyl alcohol instead, which is electronics safe. If there is sticky residue, some apolar solvents like light petroleum ether might be better though. With the case pieces apart, you can hand wash them in the sink. Again, use warm but not hot, slightly soapy water and either a scrubbing sponge or a dishwashing scrubber to get the dirt out of the nooks and crannies. Be careful you don't wet the rear label if it's got one because it might not like water. Similarly, date stamps inside the case. In those cases, it's probably better to wash the case part outside of the sink. When you're done with cleaning the case, rinse with water, flick the water off, and then dry with a towel and leave to dry overnight with the caps. By the way, while disassembling stuff, I found it useful to keep the screws in a container like this just so they don't roll away. Furthermore, if you're dealing with really yellowed plastic, you can use something called Retrobrite, which is a commercially available peroxide mixture you can use to bleach keycaps and cases. It will restore it to its original color for several years, but note that the yellowing will return eventually. As for storage, it's best to keep keyboards away from light and dust as much as possible. I pick up boxes from recycling centers, but you can also get them from post offices. If you're in the US, I've been told you can get USPS flat rate boxes like these for free, which hold even large keyboards quite comfortably. 
Boxes will also allow you to store keyboards on top of each other. Doing this without boxes, just stacking them straight on top of each other, is quite bad for the switches, especially if you do it over extended periods of time, so I would advise against that. Also, make sure cables aren't pressed tightly against a case, for example by wrapping it around it. The plasticizers in the cable will melt and dissolve the case like this. I also use a towel to cover the keyboard on my desk when I'm not using it or when I'm eating behind my desk to keep it safe from dust and food bits. The next day all these parts should be bone dry so you can reassemble it and voila, should be rise rain. That's it for this video, I hope you liked it, thank you for watching and next time we'll talk about some of the different layouts of keyboard you can get.